sie so. The Combat Cast, Episode 10, featuring Albert, Timorese Assassin, Xavier. And we are live. Hello and welcome to The Combat Cast. Episode number 10. Today I am joined with a very unique and special fighter who has come all the way from East Timor via Melbourne, Australia, over here to uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Um, his name is Albert Xavier, so I would like to welcome Albert Xavier to the show. What up, my man? What's going on, man? How you doing? <laughs> so, uh, Albert has got a very, very extensive record. He's pretty much fought the who's who's of the lightweight to light welterweight to even kind of welterweight, as we were just talking about before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so he's fought a, a lot of different fighters. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's good to have you on the show, my man. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to get things started, I just want to ask, how did your journey in martial arts, and more specifically, Muay Thai, begin? Well, um... So I used to play footy, like the main thing that they play in Australia, or Melbourne. And um, my friend, he decided to go to a kickboxing class and he wanted to go with a, a partner. And I was like, oh, look, I, I don't know what this is, I'll, but I'll go support you. And I went with him and I was like, I fell in love with a workout and the workout was pretty hard. I was like, this is, this is fun. Fell in love with it, <clears throat> but this was just kickboxing. And then uh, I went and did a trip with the boys to Thailand and uh, I was in Phuket and I saw a Thai boxing show. And I just saw what they were doing. I was like, this is pretty intense. Like, <clears throat> I want to try this when I go back home. <clears throat> and then one of my good mates, Anthony Treasure, he was doing Thai boxing with a guy called Laos Tui. And he had his own gym called uh, Young Bulls in Dandenong. And I, I reached out to my boy Treasure. I'm like, man, I really want to learn like Muay Thai, not, not kickboxing and stuff mm. like that. And he's like, listen, come down with me. It's, it's literally down the road from us. I'm like, sweet, let's, let's do it. And met Tui and haven't turned back since, man. I've just been training with him. <laughs> so you pretty much started in kickboxing slash Muay Thai, you didn't have much of a other martial arts background before that? No martial arts background. I did other sports. Like I, I, when I was a kid, I used to do, be really good at gymnastics. Mm. Did like played hockey for a little bit and um, yeah, not no martial arts. Like I maybe watched a bit of like karate or something on TV and stuff like that. And how long was it before you had your first fight? Like you started training Muay Thai at uh, Young Bulls? Yeah, Young Bulls, yeah, yeah. And then once you got into that and you found that you're really enjoying it, how long was it before you had your first fight? So when I, yeah, obviously when I first arrived, I was I was you know doing all the classes and all the, and whatnot, and Tui um, pretty much said to me, he's like, oh, would you like to fight? He's like, you can do it, and I was like, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind having a having a go. And he's like, you have to lose a lot of weight, and at the time I was you know hitting the gym, and I liked to because all my mates were going to the gym, and they, to play footy as well, you got to be a bit more stockier, yeah. and if you're too light, you're going to get thrown around in footy. Yeah. And I was a bit stocky, and I think I was about probably 73 or 75. My coach was like, you have to cut down to like 66. And I was like, no chance. I'm like, I'm like, there's no chance I can do that. I'm like, when he said, I was like, I can't, I don't know how to do that. And he's like, until you get a bit lower weight, then we can, we can try to get you a fight. And then I started like realizing, oh, fucking, I want to give it a go and stuck down to the training. And yeah, it was more disciplined and saw the other boys at the gym, see how hard they train. I was like, yeah, I'll, if I really want to stick to this, I've got to train really hard. I can't. You know, just come once a week, twice a week, and at the time I was still going out with the boys, partying and stuff, and not tr focusing on training. And then obviously I was getting inspired by other guys at, at Young Bulls, seeing how they train. I was like, oh, I really want to be like those guys, so I want to commit to it. Were a lot of them going and fighting as well? Yeah, a lot of them were fighting. So at the time I, when I first started, we had like people like Eric Miskell and like Kale Costa. They were like really good at that time, and they were training really hard. And I was like, they would kill us, inspiring. And I was like, yeah, look, I really need it. If I want to be at that level, I've got to just do the basics, like skipping and running and mm. listen to the coach instead of just doing pad work or just bag work. So I started listening and yeah, committed to training. So you originally started doing kickboxing. Yep. And then you went as like a group trip over to Thailand. Yep. Specifically to do Muay Thai or no, you the, just went for a holiday? So I went for a holiday, yeah. So okay. it was my first actual trip overseas. So after my, oh, 20, wow. after my 21st birthday, I, I used my money for my 21st. And all the boys were like, let's go on an overseas trip overseas. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And Thailand was pretty, 
you know, not cheap, but like cheaper for all of us to go. And we all went and there was one of my mates that organized it all. He's like, man, you guys, we should all go watch Muay Thai. And I didn't know what Muay Thai was. I just knew it was a type of fighting. And it's like, it's pretty, pretty intense. And we got, we went there, got to be drunk and watched it. And I was probably the only one that actually took the fight. So I was like watching it. And I was like, this is pretty serious stuff. Like, that would be an awesome skill to have. Like just to know, and I'm like, mm. we got these ripped guys killing each other. Like this is pretty sick. Like, and where did where did you watch the fights? It was I think it was a Patong Boxing Stadium. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the, yeah, the that's a good one. In Phuket, yeah, right? In Phuket, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that was when you first kind of saw Muay Thai in the flesh. In the flesh, yeah. In the right. Flesh, yeah, and yeah. you saw like you know some decent level fighters. Yeah, I was, I, banging I, it out. Yeah, I saw some obviously like you know some stitched up fights in there, but mm. yeah, I did see some like pure you know good Thai guys going at it. And I was like, this is. These two little skinny guys are going at it. I'm like, man, they could beat us all up. And what's what? At the end of the day, I'm like, what is weights for? Mm. Like, that's nothing. I'm like, if you, you can go bench press all this stuff, and you, this little guy can smash her, what's the point of that? Yeah. Like, how can you express that strength? Exactly right. You know? yeah. If you can't do shit with it, then no it's point. Almost like, what's the point? What's right? the point, man? What's yeah. the point? Yeah. I think this this realization that you had is kind of similar to like a lot of fighters out there. It's like, you know, you see all these big dudes in the gym doing heaps of stuff, but then what can they even do with that with that strength? You know. They never have an outlet to actually express it into, and then when you find something like Muay Thai, you're like, "Oh my god!" Like yeah. I finally got an outlet for like oh. all this training to like channel my energy. You, into, you, right? you find out how, I'm not saying like bodybuilders and all that, they're not yeah. weak and all that. But you just find how mentally more stronger a fighter is because mm. like you have to, you know, flick a switch to like essentially go out there and hurt someone. Mm. Whereas bodybuilding and all, all the gym stuff, it's more for yourself. Like mm. you're, you're just sculpting your body or you're getting big to mm. please yourself and please other people whereas at the end of the day like you're in a ring for a fighter that guy's going to hurt you you have to hurt him back like there's nothing yeah. else as zero as you in like that it's a it's a completely different type of kind of mental different yeah completely strength, different strength right yeah 100 yeah. yeah cool so um the next question i wanted to ask you now how many fights exactly have you had now i think it's about either 34 or 35 fights i've got to yeah i don't know what would you say is your kind of primary motivation to like keep keep pushing you know, because you know having that many fights is, is it's not easy, especially you know we were talking earlier. You yeah. got your friends; they got different jobs yeah. and stuff. You know, yeah. what is it that keeps you motivated to oh, keep well, pushing through? So look, everyone goes to different I don't know aspects of like different point of views in their life, and I got to a point of view in my life when I was like, listen, like this is something I can see myself doing. And my my main motivation, everyone says it's really cheesy. Everyone says it's their family, their friends, and and whatnot. But I, I believe like Muay Thai, if everyone did it. Like there wouldn't be as like there'd be less more assholes out there, out there, and I can't see myself not doing it. And that's my motivation, just to keep getting, getting better. Um, a lot of people do more more tired to like, you know, become world champions and all, which is great. But at the same time, I'm like being more doing more tired for myself is just my motivation is to compete for Timor, compete for my family, and I want more people to do more tired in Timor, and that's the bigger picture for me as well because I see how more tired how big it is in, in Thailand, how you can. Come from rags to riches over there, or over here. You can do the same thing in Timor, and that's my main main motivation, man. Is competing at the highest level for Timor, because um, Timor's mindset right now they're very limited, and they don't have really many, many athletes at a high level competing at, at a world stage. And having people like me to inspire kids, that's that's pretty. That's my main motivation at the moment. Like a lot of people have family and like you know being the best, but my motivation is to compete at the highest level for mm -hmm. Timor for sure. Right, so your motivation is quite deep rooted. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things there that you just kind of touched on, um, but a lot of it is coming from you know East Timor and inspiring um, you know young kids to get out there and pursue something that isn't just you know um, going to lead them to a dead end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for someone that's never done Muay Thai before, what would you what? How could you explain to them the benefits that it will give them in life? Oh well, Muay Thai will, will, it will humble you. Uh, well, I guess you can say it levels you out. Mm. Um, you find out who you really are. That, that also sounds really cheesy, but no, 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 no. It doesn't. I like, I like what you're saying, like, bro. You, when you're there, sweating, you're, you're in an environment. If you go to any Muay Thai gym, that's where the people out there look. They look the most ugliest. They're all like dying together. Everyone's like just grinding, but you're benef Everyone's benefiting them just to get better. Mm. Um, I don't know if this is like that for other sports, but for, for Thai boxing, man, you, when you're sweating and you're like dripping and your body's aching, that's probably like, that's when you're like, okay, I've trained hard today. Whereas other, other sports, like you just get a bit of sweat, you don't really work. You truly find out like, oh, my body's been pushed to the limit today. And 
every time you push your body to the limit, you, you, you find a bit about yourself. You're like, oh, I've, I've, if you train a, a good hard training Muay Thai session, your, your days are usually better. And mm. if you just go to the gym and just pump weights or just maybe just go for a jog, yeah, it's good. But if you go to a, a, if you get smash pads or hit a bag, you get that adrenaline or that aggression out, you're more likely to be a more calm person. Mm. It's weird because a lot of the, the Muay Thai scene in most places, there's, there's not, many, not many arrogant pricks, as weird as that sounds. Like, I don't know, boxing and I guess MMA or kickboxing, you've got a lot of egos, but Thai boxing, it's everyone's the same community. Everyone, you have a lot of people that are beat the shit out of each other, but at the end of it all, they'll have a beer with each other afterwards. So that's just the culture, and that's, that's one thing that's really good about Muay Thai, like a good Muay Thai gym. I don't know if that's every Muay Thai gym, but that's all the Muay Thai places I've gone to where they're just the environment, it's very different. Everyone's at, a, at their worst place, like they look so, they're all sweaty, look yuck, but everyone's enjoying themselves, having a good time. I don't know if it's like that for other sports. Mm, nice, mm. well said, man. Yeah, I think what you touched on in terms of like, it'll just, it'll humble you, yeah. you know? For someone to come out of their, you know, normal life and it's like cushion and little bubble and to be put into you know a situation like what you said where you're like all sweaty you look like shit but you're all working with with a team but for yourself at the same time towards a greater good you know i think that that is a humbling experience you know of course yeah. especially when you look like shit you're yeah. fucking <laughs> dripping out oh, sweat yeah, stuff, yeah, you know? yeah. 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 Exactly. that's cool man yeah. nice um the so one thing else that you also touched on there is that you know you don't see so much of this ego and um, you know, kind of like um, you know, you see a lot more humility and um, people that are a lot more grounded, I guess, in the Muay Thai communities. Um, how do you think? Because I know that like being cocky and being flamboyant and boxing and MMA, you know, obviously that's led to those sports becoming more mainstream. Um, how do you feel Muay Thai is growing in comparison to those sports nowadays? Well, you can definitely say right now, uh, boxing and in particular, definitely MMA. They're, they're at a different level in terms of exposure to um, the, like the general public. You got, if you walk around the street, a person's more likely to know Floyd Mowilla, Conor McGregor, rather than to know Sanchai or the, the top mm. ranked uh, or Bork stadium. Or Bork or Yotankai or someone like that. It's going to be very hard, but they'll definitely know Conor McGregor or Floyd Mowilla. And why do they know these people? Because they're trash talk, they flash their money, they're popular mm. on social media. There's not really any flamboyant talk crap guys on social media for Muay Thai. You might have... Mm. One or two guys that you know talk about crap, but no, it's not nothing crazy like mm. saying or like getting a press conference and heaps of, getting heaps of you know, build up of what MMA, UFC, mm. they all UFC and all these boxing guys, they're, they're promotional companies, so they know how to, they've got marketing teams and how to do it. In Thai boxing, I think it'll be a bit weird if if a Thai boxer came out and started talking smack about someone. It's just it's not the part of the culture of the sport. And I, I think it probably would do the opposite effect. People wouldn't support that type of behavior because mm. it, it goes away from the actual essence of Muay Thai which is about respect, discipline, you know, honor, all, all, the, all, the, all those main principles behind it and if you start going against it with all that trash talk to my, try and make it mainstream, mm. which I, or in my opinion, I don't, I don't think it'll work out because that's not what true Thai boxing is. It kind of takes away from the sport 100%, and yeah. the purest of the sport are pretty much all about that. Exactly. I just want to think of, just, just looking into MMA, I think someone that, you know, is good at kind of um, living or embodying somewhat of a Muay Thai mindset would be someone like Khabib, you know, yeah, who's exactly. quite humble yeah. and, you know, I feel like his mindset is kind of like almost similar to like a lot of Thai fighters or, you cool. know, no like just show respect, yeah, that's it. go yeah. in there, just dominate. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it, he's got his like, you know, proven record and success yeah. on, on the cage to back that like, but then you got like as well like GSP. It's, it's, it's all about the characters that you find in the sport. Like mm. some people, imagine if there was twenty like angels in the game. It'll get it'll get pretty boring. Yeah, boring, yeah. But then you get that one guy that comes. Everyone's going to tune in and watch him, which is cool and all. But for MMA, I like, I get sucked in as well. I I love to watch like kind of get trash talk. It's great. Yeah. It's funny. But at the same time, like like it's just, it's just, mm. it's a spinning record. Like you know you don't you want to hear it too much like, when when someone talks too much bad stuff. Like yeah. at the end, they're just going to fight. Like I just want to watch the fight, but. When you want to sell it to the general public, they want to see, oh, I want to see that guy. I want, they want blood. Like they want the modern day gladiator. At the end of the day, like they want to, mm. if you, if they wouldn't appreciate a five round technical technical fight of Thai boxing. Mm. They might sit there and be like, what is this? Why isn't that guy not trying to knock him out when they try someone trying to outscore someone? They don't appreciate that, and that's why you see like the rise of like you know, the the Muay Thai with glo like the, with the gloves. gloves, MMA gloves. Just they want it three rounds. They want people to try essentially knock each other because it, it's more exciting to 
the general public and they want to be able to sell that to you know tv networks yeah, or whatever like it is mainstream tv yeah, mainstream network. tv and at the end that's money the money's going to make the world go around as well and mm. fighters they'll fight for money and the scene will slowly change as well um maybe there's five round like maybe we won't see many five round five round fights as much anymore and be more you know three rounds with those mma gloves and that seems to be like the trend these days right it definitely is like especially with what mma has done now they probably see having gloves now is a bit too much too soft or with some people in general probably but they want to see you know they want to see blood and that's what it is like mm. interesting man yeah i'll definitely yeah i'll definitely agree with you bro 100 percent eh? and i think um i guess as just the sport of martial arts as a whole evolves i think that's something that we can probably start to see that people will start to move a bit more away from you know the the trash talking flamboyant personalities because as more martial artists start to take up the sport you get those like deep-rooted traditions of like respect and honor mm -hmm. coming through and i think yeah well i'm hoping i'm hoping that that eventually does start to like show its face more and you know people can like love the sport and that can make lots of money and fighters can get paid well but also that like, the foundation of it all is that you know principle of respect and and honor yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll, yeah. see. we'll see. We'll see, right? We'll see, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. It's tough, it's tough. It's so tough. It's a long one. It's, it's a long, long shot. We'll, we'll see, yeah. we'll see. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to ask you about is, um, so for those that don't know, um, or are unfamiliar with Albert, he has a project that he's uh, currently running uh, alongside his fighting, and that's um, to work with um, the youth back in East Timor um, and just the communities there. So can you tell us a little bit of, more about your project? Oh, so... <clears throat> Uh, how to explain it? Like, yeah, how did it begin? Yeah, so start with that. Um, how it began? So when um, I had a fight in in Australia, <clears throat> and my cousins like to me, man, you, your name's the Timber's assassin. I'm gonna give you my flag. Take the flag out. Um, go on the fight. Go on fight, uh, and use it as like your entrance. So they wrapped it around me, and as I was walking around, um, wrapped it around me. <clears throat> There's a, a photographer took a photo of it. And then I, I shared the photo because was, was, when I was doing my work, I took a photo of me um, having the flag. And that, that photo, it, it resonated with a lot of Team Reese people back home and it got shared. And everyone's like, who's this Team Reese guy? And I had a, like a lot of, a bit of fanfare, like, man, like, we want to learn, like at the end of the day, we want to learn more about Albert. Who is this guy? He's fighting, in, he's fighting at Thai boxing and there's like, but he's fighting for Team War. Like, we want to know more about him. So it built up after that and they're like, I was getting messages like, oh, when are you going to come to Timor? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm telling my parents, I'm like, mum, mum and dad, I'm like, this is, uh, they want me to go, you know, back to Timor. And when I went, when I went to Timor last time, it, was, it had um, a bit of a civil war, so, <clears throat> a bit war torn and stuff, so, mm. and it's, it's got its problems here and there. And then, um, with, uh, with Timor, everyone usually um, helps in a way of like, you know, with infrastructure and like, you know, agriculture. I don't have that skill set, but I had a skill set of like, you know, sports and Muay Thai. I was like, mm. how can I help Muay Thai using, or how can I help Timor using Muay Thai? And I was like, I'm just going to go there and just promote Muay Thai. Well, just do some workshops there. And I guess you can just introduce myself and be with the people. They want me to be there, I'm going to go. So I got in contact with a couple of my cousins over there. I was like, hey, I'm going to come over there and do some Muay Thai workshops. I'm going to um, get some, um, have some fundraisers in Australia, get some money and donate some sporting goods. What did they need over there? And they're like, man, we want some, we want a boxing ring, we want this, that, that. So Timor has a good boxing scene in, in, in Timor, but they didn't really have a Thai boxing scene at all. Look, they didn't really have, a, they didn't really have one until I went over there. And I was like, look, I'll go there and I'll just donate um, pads, gloves, whatever you guys need. And I had a massive fundraiser to Australia, in, in Australia, uh, donate all this to a, a club in Dili, uh, the main capital of Timor. Um, the club called Benfica uh, donated a lot of gloves and it was pretty surreal so when, when, I, went, when I went to Dili and Benfica and I was coaching um, the clubs over, uh, coaching the kids over there I met some really poor poor clubs so this, this, this just shows you how poor the, um, the clubs are there just to participate in sport so I went to one, a, a club called Bonnaburro Boxing Club um, they reached out to me I went over there and when I went there, I went to see what facilities or the training grounds that they were at. I pretty much went through like this main, like dirty old swamp. And as I got there, I just saw like a slab of cement. And I saw about 12 guys shadow boxing. And I'm looking around, I'm, I said to my mum, I'm like, is this the gym you're talking about? And my mum was like, 
that's the gym. So I just saw for about four guys, <laughs> 12 guys shadow boxing, there was a couple guys bare feet, and all shadow boxing, they're all moving pretty well. Mind you, Timur, they love boxing. And I'm like, holy crap, like, what's going on? So I went there and then I, ha- I, I went in and um, sort of had a speech, and the, the trainer was like, so happy to, that I came. He's like, I'm so glad that you came. And I, I, gave him a, I came back with some, I gave him a couple of boxing, glo- uh, boxing um, bags, boxing gloves. And as I got there, they stopped the training session. They just like, I, did, I sort of did like a little press conference and they all like asked me questions and stuff. And I was like, well, I'm like, is this where you guys train? And they're like, yes. I'm like, wow. I'm like, how do you guys train here? And they're just like, oh. And they pointed to me, they pointed to a bag over there, which wasn't a bag, it was a, a pole with uh, about eight tires strapped oh, around it. Yeah. And they just punched it. And I'm like, so how do you guys, like, how do you guys hit pads and all that stuff? They like, they pointed to uh, one pair of gloves that they've been using since, so I went there in 2015, and they've been using one pair of gloves since 2009. 2009. And um, wow. they told me, yeah, they were just, so the person said that the top guys in that club to compete for Timor, so they'd go to compete at the, they'd go to Olympic trials and stuff like that, they would use that one pair of glove between 12 to 15 kids. And I'm talking about like, you know, welterweights, so like, like featherweights, all using the same glove. So whoever had a fight coming up, then they used that. The, the what was most disturbing was in um, I told them what are, what are the like, problems do you have for your training? They're like oh, just just to practice um with our we can't really spar. I'm like why? They're just like oh we don't have any mouth guards. I'm like really? It's like oh it's not just us sparring, but when we go to the national tournaments, we can only um, we don't even have mouth guards. I'm like what do you mean? I'm, like, oh, I'm asking them what, what does that mean? He's like oh we have one mouth guard at the regional tournament shared for everyone. So they just. So as we're fighting each in each corner, they just wash it out and you put it in. And wow. I was like, that's what they do. I'm like, Dude. that's what they do to fight. I'm like, yeah. and I said to my, I'm like, because I, I, I can't speak um, Tetum properly, which is the main language in Timor. I said, I'm like, how do you how do you say it? Sorry, it's Tetum. Oh, Tetum. Yeah, so my mom was translating for me, and as my mom was translating, she, <laughs> I, I, I was telling my mom, I'm like, just tell them like, listen, I'm going to come back, I'm going to donate goods, which I did, and I'm like, right now, I'm not a fighter. I'm a, I'm like a little pussy because you guys have had so many barriers to, to you know, participate in boxing, mm. but you found a way to box and compete at a high level. Like you want to compete for a team, well, that's all your dreams. Mm. And you, I, you guys idolize me. I'm like, I'm, I, I complain sometimes. Like I come sometimes I can't train, but like the fact that you guys can't even do, you know, you go through all those, high, like hardships to be able mm. to mm. compete for your country. You guys go through that. And as I was telling this to them, as my mum was like translating, the stuff they were saying back to my mum. She started crying, and I was like, "Mum, what, wow. what? I was like, Mom, why are you crying?" And they're just like, "They are so happy that you came to, to Timor, to specifically their club, because they've had no hope. They had no hope. They, they look at Jeez, man, yeah, that's emotional. Yeah. Bro. So, they're, they're, so my mom's crying, and she's telling me, "So I don't know what's going on." They're like, they look at me, they're like, "Yeah, well, you might be like, you might be heroes to us, but you're you're still a hero because at the end of the day, you could like forget about us, but you still fly the flag, and at the end of the day." No matter what, we still try, you're still our hero, even though it's Thai boxing. Mm. We still aspire to be someone. I was just telling them, I don't know how to. I, don't know, I, I was, I was like, I wish I could bring we all ship you to Australia, give you guys like boxing community. Just, I'm like, even though this is, I'm a Thai boxer, I want to help you guys because you guys got the mentality of fighters. Mm. And that's how the project started. Like, we, like now, I teamed up with a lot of um, local clubs over there, and um, so the boxing scene was big over there. But Thai boxing again, mind you. So this is even deeper story now with Timor. So the main reason Timor went through its civil, civil unrest, so they wanted to be an in, in, independent country from Indonesia, mm. and they finally became independent from Indonesia. So Indone- Indonesia invaded Timor. So the background story is they were colonized by Portugal. They declared independence from Portugal. Indonesia invaded, and they wanted it to become Indonesia, and mm. East Timor fought for independence. And it was a massive you know, ruckus, and they really destroyed East Timor. So that's why there was so much civil unrest there. Civil unrest, and then um, mm. they just they do hum- bad atrocities. I had like members of my family like you know tortured and stuff like that. That's whole other ball. Like there's probably heaps of um, you know documentaries online yeah. d- detailing. It. There's a, it was one of the biggest genocides as well happening over there. So political unrest, not not good. And when I went there, I was like, I always said to my parents, one day I'm going to come back here and help out. I don't know how. I don't have mu- I don't have money. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I have to come back and do something. And that's why that's where Thai boxing was my my key to come and help. Your them. vehicle. My vehicle to come and help them because at the end of the day I can't go there and give everyone ten thousand dollars, go help yourself. Because 
the end of the day, they, don't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't know how to spend it anyway. Yeah. But I'm gonna try giving them the skill set. I'm like, if people like Manny Pacquiao can f- fight out, come out, and become units in boxing, why can't a team lose person come out? Not just that, so martial arts was banned in Timor. <laughs> so much build up to this. So there was a gang on problem in Timor. So um, each gang in Timor would obviously run a corner and the biggest gangs in Timor had like uh, Seti Seti, which is 7-7, seven, seven. you got PSHD, that they're big martial art gangs. So you had martial arts, sports, yeah, and they were used that. Damn. Yeah, so you have like skilled martial artists like fighting each other. So have you heard of Pinjak Salo? No. So that's no. an Indonesian martial arts with like weapons and stuff and you go stab someone. So they had to have like... What, how, do you, what, how do you spell it? It's called Pinjak Salo. Salat. Yeah, Silat or something right, like that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's an, I, I have heard of this. So it's yeah. an Indonesian martial arts where you like it's... Is it like weapons? Weapons and stuff. So uh, they yeah. had a lot of martial arts gangs. So they would control, you know, all the bad stuff in Timor. And that's where all the civil unrest happened. So, for example, I'll be like a political party. I'd hire this gang. You'd be another political party. You hire that gang. It got to a, a, such a bad point that the prime minister of, of Timor would have to get the gang members, not just, you know, the politicians. He got the gang members and politicians and organized a priest street. He's like, oh, you guys, everyone needs to calm down. We need to stop, you know, killing, killing, each, killing each, other. each other. And I'm like, and this, we're gonna kill generations to come. This is, we need to work over this stuff. So that, that was a barrier I had to come with. So I, <laughs> I wow. wanted to go to help Timor and I was like, oh, come train this martial art. And they're just like, no, man, we don't want nothing to do with martial arts. And I'm like, man, I go, what, that, what, what those martial arts, I'm, what martial art they pinjack seller that's not to me that's not the like the essence of like creating True a prop, martial arts. yeah creating a proper individual that's like we want to kill someone that's what which is if you're like i guess a self-defense like you know if you're a like special forces dude maybe you need to learn that stuff but this is muay thai is a sport yeah maybe back in the day in the ancient times yeah there was some moves to kill people mm. but this is at the end of the sport is to create better individuals and i had a lot of like hurdles to overcome that because when they saw, when they heard Muay Thai, they're like, what is this then? Like, you're not a martial art, we don't want any more games. So I had like a lot of, um, a lot of hurdles, a lot of hurdles, a lot of hurdles, and a lot of like, you know, speaking, a lot of emails, and I finally was like, got all together, made a program, and I was like, I'm gonna go there, link up with people, went there, promoted Muay Thai, yeah, and just, not made myself famous, but yeah, I guess you can say I became a bit of a cult hero, because mm. people were just like, you know, we thank, we thank you for the fact that you came here and you thought about us because there's people that wouldn't do what you, what you just did and I didn't really like the people that helped so Haley, Nikki and Trage they, they came and helped down they sacrificed their like their annual leave so everyone, everyone was working everyone's doing their own thing they stopped like their lives to come help these people wow. and even though it wasn't like giving I guess money or donating like you know sp- specific goods but we gave them an experience to like change that mindset and that's why I keep trying to tell I, to this day, I keep trying to tell people in um, Timor, I'm like, you can, we can create something good in Timor. If everyone's just training, I'm like, and with these gangs, if they've got beefs, man, let's organize, let's organize a fight night. Yeah. You've got beef, let's, let's dip it out. <laughs> you're, really, you're really the biggest yeah, gang. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's bang it out, man. I'm like, yeah. And I've seen people, well, I've even seen it in New Zealand, like with all those big gangs, they've organized fight shows. They get yeah. the, two guys got beef, let's, let's duke it out. Yeah. And that's the best way. There's no egos yeah, or nothing, because at yeah. the end of the day, you can talk all your big smack, but when you're in the ring, that's when you know. That's when you know yeah. your, your true words come out. You can yeah. say all what you want to say. When, you, when, you, when you're duking it out, you know more words. That's it. And then they can just close the book on that. And, mm. and that's where Timor, they've got a fighting spirit. And, you know, they've been fighting for years. And mm. I still believe they'll have... it's quite ingrained in them now. Sorry? It's quite ingrained in them it's now. In, yeah, it's ingrained for sure. So they've been in so many, you know, wars. And mm. they've, they're stuck there. And they've held on to their cultures and traditions. And they stayed Timorese. A lot of countries that are, have been colonized and other stuff like that, they've lost, they've lost their way. But Timor, no, like it's such a little, little country between two powers. What we got Indonesia on the left hand side, and you got Australia on the right hand side. Two of the biggest powerhouses, and you know they're still holding, they're holding their own. And, and that, that's you know testament to the Timorese people with all the wars that have come through. They've stayed East Timor. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's so awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make you proud? Oh, very, very proud. Yeah. So, yeah very proud of me like at the end of the day my mom and dad they came to Australia with nothing mm. and they created something so my brother so how did they actually move to Australia so my dad he was he studied in Portugal mm. but my mom she snuck onto. so my dad left before the war even happened but my mom she 
when the war was happening, she snuck onto a Dutch vessel and became like an asylum seeker. Wow. And, and met with like, all my cousins. So when the war was, you know, really bad over there, she just snuck on a Dutch vessel, came over there and seeked asylum through Australia and there, yeah. She became refugee, asylum seeker, and then became, yeah, a productive member of Australia. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So amazing. So my parents and my family have seen a lot and um, yeah, they've, they've sacrificed a lot for me and my brother. And yeah, we're, we're the lucky ones. Like, you know, they've done well. So my brother's, he's a doctor in the, uh, in the Air Force, or he's, he's out now. But we, we love Australia. Australia. Australia is home to us and I consider myself Australian. But Timorese is Australian, my blood, mm. it's Timorese. Everything I know is Timorese. But I'm also Australian as well. Like, best of both worlds. And I'll never forget my heritage, I'll never forget my culture. And at the end of the day, I always find it funny. If I'm in Australia, <laughs> I'm Timorese. If I'm Timor, I'm Australian. So it's very hard, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a tough balance, but each to their own. Like, I never ever, that's one thing that I'll um, never forget is where I come from. And I always got to give back to them no matter what. So where would you, um, you know, in the next, say, five to 10 years, do you, do you have like a, like a GoFundMe website or something like that? Oh, so we, we did and we, we, um, we raised for that time for that project, we raised what we needed to do. So we were raising money for, you know, shipping of a boxing ring and mm. all the equipment. So we got all, all that money raised, but we're gonna probably set up another one, cause I'm- um, Okay, so you do it kind of like trip by trip. Trip by trip, because at the end of that- I know what you mean. I don't want to be those guys to spend the money. Exactly, and this is what I got told by one of the boxing coaches over there, is like, don't ever give us money because we don't know how to spend it. It's not like Australia where you have like, I guess a chain of command that yeah. like knows how to, divvy out the funds of like, you know, donations of like, oh, you know, this, this club, this, this, that. Yeah. We, it's like, we would benefit from just equipment. basic equipment. He goes, they want boxing shoes, they want runners, they want- Mouth skippers. guards. Mouth guards. <laughs> <laughs> just to be, they need things just to be able to like, mm. participate in sport. And I'm like, if I can somehow, you know, get secondhand running shoes, man, that's, that's, a, that's a win, wraps, win. You know, it may be like rubbish to us, but it's treasure for them. And I'm like, it's gonna be benefit for them. At the end of the day, they don't need much. I'm like, they're still fighting and training with limited resources. If you give them a bit more, it just makes it easier for them to train. And I still believe like that's the that's where you find the best athletes. And, like if you go to like in Thailand, especially in Muay Thai, like the poor parts of the, the yeah. Isan region, yeah. that's where the killers are, man. Yeah. For Thai because like, absolute beast, absolute beast. Because what they got nothing like that, but yeah. they're still there training for the, their motivation is because they want to do it for the family. And I believe that you can do the same thing with Timor. Like mm. you got people from Cambodia, Laos doing the same thing, like fighting. It's so beautiful because you can fight your way out of certain situations. It's crazy. If you've got a mental problem, start training and start freaking so you can fight your way Channel out of it. Channel your energy into Channel it. Channel your energy, man. You and see it time and time again, eh? All the you time. You hear fighters' stories, oh, I was a bit wild, I was a bit loose, <laughs> I was hitting in the wrong direction, I found you know, MMA or Muay Thai or boxing or whatever it may be. I channeled my energy into it and then they're like, you know, some champion or like, you know, they're doing really well for themselves. Just set their focus and direction. I don't know if any other, any other sports can do that. Only martial arts, maybe. Probably can get that from like you know rugby or something like that, but just because you have to put so much dedication and commitment into your training, into your focus, you, you know it, it's good. And I think a lot of it is always about self improvement as well. Of course, yeah, of you know you're always investing into yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you're working in a team environment. Yeah, so yeah. You know I think that's that's it, quite a cool. Everyone's ch thing. everyone's chasing the same goal, but yeah. on different different paths, and everyone's got their own story. Mm. Like, like, like you're doing now, everyone's got their own different story. Mine might be so completely different to someone else. He might, he might have some guy that's like super nerd, really well off family, and his mm. family's like, why are you fighting? It's yeah. like, I love it. I love every, it. Every, they know you, yeah. they love it because everyone channels the same thing, the focus, the, you know. Yeah. Just that, it's weird, man. Like, it is, right? I feel How like it just draws people it just, in. It's weird. It's, you, come here. <laughs> it's get like, over here. You get addicted. <laughs> You can, you can have a plan. You can have you can have a plan yeah. and be like, I'm going to be like a doctor. Yeah. You get into the train. They're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be a doctor anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a concert pianist. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Sorry, mom. I'm going to train Muay Thai. I'm going to fight Muay Thai in Thailand. <laughs> crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah. Man. Jeez, bro. That is that is a really inspiring story, man. And um, yeah, 100. percent Next time you're going to do your GoFundMe thing, let me know and I'll put it out to everyone. Yeah, man, thank so you. Thank you. Yeah. We can all support this awesome man. Yeah, man, thank you. <laughs> doing, doing wonders, bro. That's, yeah, that's such a cool story, man. It's so epic. And um, yeah, shit, gosh. I <laughs> just, it's just gonna be so exciting to see. I think what would be cool is if you could actually get someone to go with you and kind of document the process yeah, so somewhat, you know? But, so the last time we went, because obviously we're on a budget. Yep. We just got GoPro footy, go okay. footage and stuff like that. So my mate's gonna, well, we're paying someone to video, like, um, cool. to do a video. Cool. Yeah, and you know, that'll be the next, I guess you can sort of 
show people like, oh, this is what we've done and this is yeah. what the next thing is going to be. In. This is the next step. Yeah, I'm going to try. Next level. Oh, we'll try to bring someone up, but if I can get some from Timor to do it, that'd be nice. But right. it's, it's not the be all yeah. end all as well. Because right now, we went from like no Muay Thai scene to having a Muay Thai scene. There's like clubs now popping up. And I've, I've seen that they always send me photos to keep me updated. And I've seen some, because there was obviously like Thai embassies and they got Royal Thai police that are there. They're showing, they're coming to, on their trips to the team where they'll come and teach some Muay Thai. I just saw, mm. I see them teaching the, the white crew and stuff like cool. that. But it'd be cool just to, I don't know, even just like someone having a syllabus there just to teach them, just to throwing elbows. Like we were very lucky to go to Thailand, even in Australia and New Zealand, there's like a scene there where you might have like an expat Thai or whatever it may be, like, or somebody that's experienced with Thai, to teach basic skills in Thai boxing. They didn't have that level at all, at all yet. Mm. But if you can create, if they don't have, have that foundation. They don't have that foundation. If you can get a four or five guys, I'd love it if four or five guys came from Timor um, to Thailand, trained, racked up a certain amount of fights. They don't have to be world class, but just to learn the knowledge, they would embrace themselves, like see how hard the training is, and then spread the gospel of Muay Thai. Because that scene, it's, it's, it's part of Southeast Asia. They've got the natural build. They've got, mm. they've got the build for it, man. Like you, you see all Laos, Cambodia, you know, they've all got the build for Thai boxing. I believe Timorese people are the build for Thai boxing as well. Even MMA boxing. They just, they're a fighting spirit as well. Cool. Yeah. So I just want to take things back to you now, Albert. Um, how has your time, personally yourself, in Thailand, training and more specifically at Khao Phun Sip Gym, how's that kind of shaped you as a fighter and how's that changed your style and your mindset towards fighting? So I always say this to people, there's like a difference between being ready and then there's Bangkok ready. I don't know if that, that's the saying, but I don't know, maybe you just come to a place like Khao Phun Sip, for me especially, there's no distractions. I'm not saying training in Australia or training wherever you are, you're from is, is, not, is not, uh, not, not good. But when you're here and you're, you've segregated yourself from like, you know, I guess distractions of like, just doing little things like maybe having a beer on the weekend with your mates or the birthday parties, all that stuff like that. You just focus on Muay Thai all day, every day. And then you can just purely just think about getting better rather than I've got to go to, go to work and, you know, focus on this and, focus on that and get distracted here and there. Oh, I've got to make time for this person. You just come here, train Muay Thai, it's for yourself. And in, in fighting especially, you've got to become very selfish. Um, and Kif one tip, it just showed me the, the true instance of, I guess, hard work. Like, I used to think I trained her hard in Australia, and then I went, came to Kif one tip, and I just saw how, how hard the tra um, ties train, how, the expectations of what it is to fight here. At the end of the day as well, the, what's good about fighting in Thailand, you can fight, really hard but you have to give it your all and still lose but as long as you give it your all and that's the true essence of Thai boxing you could fight amazing or you could fight really like really bad and win they'll be more disappointed if you didn't give it your all and try with your all that's what that's what I really like about Kifon Tip as well it's about, it's about how you perform not the outcome and sometimes that's for me that's that's, that's the best thing because just focusing too much on the outcome sometimes you might suck yourself up but you getting yourself better just training hard is pretty good too so you would say the main kind of difference between uh, training in Australia and training in Thailand, for you anyways, is just the ability to really focus. So like just channel your energy just purely into, into Muay Thai and just have that time for yourself as opposed to like, you know, being back in Australia where you, you do have a lot of like social obligations yeah. and sometimes you feel a bit bad, like, oh, you know, bit of a, I'm sorry, I'm being a dick, you know, yeah. I've got to go train and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you're in Thailand, it's like, sorry, I'm in Thailand. <laughs> you know, I'm That's exactly training right. in Thailand. Yeah, it's just it's just the what what, allow, what even what country that allows you to do that. If you if you if you're in Australia, you can't exactly train twice. You can depending on what jobs you do. You can't exactly train twice a day and still put productively work amazing. You know, because here at least you will train in the morning, you will rest, train at night. It becomes pretty you know boring, but it's just it's more focused on that. In, in Australia or all other countries, you can't really do that because a lot of people don't know what Thai boxing as well as well, and they. They don't respect it like your commitment to the training. So they're like, oh, what, what is this, what is Muay Thai? Whereas here, in Mo if you go to a masseuse and you're getting a massage, they're like, oh, I'm not Muay Thai boxing. They'll know mm -hmm. straight away. If they see a foreigner at it, they're like, no, they know you're training for Thai boxing. You get more recognition in that sense. And even if you get a cut, if you go to a local pharmacy, they'll know how to stitch you up. Like, it's, it's crazy like that. Yeah. Because Muay Thai is part of their culture, obviously. And it's like, it's like us going to like America. If you're, if you're going to be a basketball player, you're going to play the big leagues, you're going to play NBA, you're going to go to play soccer, or you're going to go to Europe. You're going to, you're going to be the highest level in Thai boxing. You want to go to Thailand. You want to go to, you want to, go to the Mecca. You want to go to the Mecca, yeah. It, it also, you, you understand the game as well. Like, in, in a, not just Australia, but other countries, like, 
you might get some really really dodgy scoring systems and stuff. But in Thailand, you understand, you start to understand that why judges score this way and that, the different styles of Muay Thai, and how, the, how important kicks are and whatnot. And it just opens your eyes a lot more to the Muay Thai game and the history as well, and how much like no build up of a, there's no build up to a fight in in Australia and like um, other Western countries. There's a massive build up. Sell tickets, do this, do that. It's like Man, sometimes in Thailand you don't even know. You do know you're fine, but you don't really care because you just focus on training. In Thailand, like you're probably studying tape, which is I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing as well. Like you're studying tape, you're focusing. Oh, I've got to put you know some persons promoting my fight on this, this, that. Whereas Thailand, you're just like I just got to train, make weight. I'm just going to throw down. Sometimes it's almost better not to know who you're fighting. It's right? how good is it? You just rock yeah. up on the day because sometimes yeah. you can soak yourself up like that. But in saying that, it's also good to become prepared and have have some video. About, you, about the opponent that you have, but it's just part of, part of life here. And if you do well, you do well. If you do bad, you do bad. Or you onto the next one, where sometimes there's a massive build up in Australia, you've got to sell tickets and you know, promote yourself. And mm. So I think, as like a, you know, a fighting purist, someone like yourself, it just gives you that ability to take away a lot of external factors. Yeah and just focus on actually just fighting yeah, yeah, yeah. and just getting better at fighting yeah, of course because you don't have that added pressure like you said of selling tickets you don't have all that build up you've literally just got nothing but hard training yeah. and then boom fight yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's quite interesting isn't it yeah. it's just like calm calm and then just yeah, raging cool. storm it's, and then back to calm exactly again. right exactly right? right it's different yeah it's different i don't know if it's the culture of how they're just so laid back it's just to tell like there's no there's no, not even any, any nerves, I guess you can say, like in a week of, like usually in a week of, and we're cutting weight back home, you get maybe a bit agitated, a bit aggro because you're cutting weight. Here it's just like, boy's cutting weight, rub them down, go for a run, and just make weight, no, no worries, no problem, relax, survive, survive, you know, all good. Well, when you're back home, you're like, visual, visual I gotta focus this way. You got heaps of people coming up to you that yeah. don't understand yeah, fighting. Don't understand. Oh, you gotta you, fight this week, don't you? Are you ready? Are you ready, bro? Are you are ready? You, have you been have training? training hard enough? I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Have you been training, bro? Oh, man. Have you been training? Shit. I've got a South Pacific title fight coming yeah. up, so yeah, yeah. I kind of have to train, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of have it's, to. Yeah, yeah. It, it, if it, I want to win, I kind of yeah. have to train, eh? That does your head. Yeah. It does your head. And you get constantly asked those, eh? All the time, isn't it? Especially when you tell like a random person out on the street, oh, I've got a fight, a big fight coming up. Oh, yeah, have you been training hard for it? Yeah. You know, and then you got to like go into those details and stuff. Whereas over here, it's like we've got a good big big fight coming up. Oh, good luck! Yeah, yeah good luck! Fight hard! Yeah, know, yeah, that's Woo. it. You know, well, like that's it. They just assume that you've yeah. been training hard. Exactly. No right. one here is going to ask yeah. you, "Have oh, you yeah. been training hard?" Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like <laughs> they know that. you're you're yeah, dying yeah, every day. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. A piece of you is still in the gym yeah. every time. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> that's 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 actually pretty frustrating. But it's, yeah. it's just not everyone knows Thai boxing back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't expect them to know like you got Thai boxing on. Like live to air TV, you don't get that right. back home. You got to, it's different. Yeah, different. It's on here every week, multiple every channels, week. different it's, days of the week. They, you know, they got commercials all the time. They don't know. Yeah. They know what's up, man. They got so many promotions. They know what's up. It's interesting, eh? But it'd be very difficult to see. Uh, it'd be awesome if I could see like a Thai boxer become like a world famous in Australia. Yeah. The, the, the guy that's doing it is probably John Wayne Parr in Australia. Right. And he's probably biggest fight that's going to make him so famous is a boxing fight. It's a boxing fight. Yeah. So there you go. That, that's a, that's. But it's hopefully great. that draws ultimately more attention to Hopefully that's right? John Wayne Pai, he's yeah. like a... I'd be knocked out Anthony. Oh man, you, you never know, know man. Just, just well, you never know. John right? Wayne Pai, he's a freak, yeah. man. He's a freak of nature, yeah. man. And, it, it'd be and he's got some good hands too, right? He's, 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 he's fought yeah. boxing before as well, so he'd be yeah. a good way to go, man. And he, yeah. I think that's like the last couple of fights he's going he's to have, and that'll be a good mm -hmm. way. And he deserves it. And that'll be like a good money uh, good, good money as well. Good payout, right? Uh, for sure. He's probably, that's probably the most money that he's, he's going to get, considering yeah. how much fights in Thai boxing. That's a crazy thing, man. People do Thai boxing for the love of it rather than the money. Because if, if you know, he's took probably fighting Anthony Mundine for how much money, and he's fighting at the, he was fighting at the highest levels of Thai boxing, and he wouldn't get close to what he would have got, what he's what he's going to get at, at the Mundine fight. Which is, I don't know if it's sad or you can look at a double-edged sword where he got the fight the baddest, toughest ties and do well against them, but then get no money, or fight. Boxing, which is probably doesn't really like that much, but he's going to get the best paycheck. Mm. Who knows, man? Yeah, I think that's that's something that I started to see with a lot of the guys back home <coughs> in New Zealand. You know, they're all fighting internationally, high-level kickboxing, and you know, in their heart, they were you know striking purists. But then now they're starting to transition into you know MMA and things like yeah. that. And you know, you talked about it a bit yeah. too. You've got a lot of people that you know that are yeah. starting to switch over to MMA yeah. just because the money's there. You know, You've, I've seen like raw, a pure talent that I'm just like, man. Your style is so good to stay, keep doing Thai boxing, but they're, 
they've either come to a crossroads of like, yeah, the money is like not good enough and they want to live their life as a fighter. Until they, just even basically like, if you want to get sponsored, it's easier probably to get sponsored being an MMA fighter because you're more well known, you get more followed rather than Thai boxing. And it's like, it's really sad because I think that's the, the future of the sport. Like if, if Thai boxing or the striking sports, they don't compete with that level, we're going to lose kids at the younger level just immersing themselves into MMA. They're going to have like, instead of having like, pure Thai boxing, a pure karate guy, a pretty jiu-jitsu guy, they're going to be like hybrids, they're going to be like a black belt of jiu-jitsu by the age of like 25, and, yeah. you know, have like 60, you know, they're, all good, they're going to be like good at everything. Yeah. So that's where the, you'll see Thai boxing will become famous, but they'll lose a lot of the elite guys that they could have had at the younger right. age, which is probably the, like some of the best dudes. Not the best dudes because they, they got snapped up when they were like 16 to do mm. MMA, because MMA, there's so much to learn. Yeah. Like, and, and when Thai boxing as well, you got to... You gotta stick to it. There's so much things you gotta just focus on at the same time. But MMA, it's like it's like what they say, you know, master or jack of all trades, master of none. So you gotta mm. you gotta expose yourself to it all. With star boxing, you just gotta focus on one thing, you know. Mm. But that's I feel like that's the future of striking sports, and that's why you'll see, you know, one one championship doing really well with all those cage more like more tie stuff, and um, you know, kickboxing with small gloves. It's gonna change it for yeah. sure. It's just it's just the way it is, man. It's hard to predict how it's all going to evolve, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you, again, just going back to yourself, um, what was your most memorable fight? So, you know, if, we're, if you're looking back over all the fights that you had, which one would you say, like, really kind of stands out to you? It could have been a win, it could have been a loss, but it was just one that you just really remember and you just really, like, you know, kind of cherish it. Uh, I mean, you've had quite a few now, so. Oh, pre uh, yeah. maybe when I fought a kiss, probably Chris, um, Chris knew in it for the WBC title, and um, he was, yeah, a tough boy from Eight Blades, and he's he's fighting for one right now, so he's pretty good. And um, we're good mates in the are, and um, I remember I think I just came back from Thailand, and we both were training pretty hard for that fight, and I think I got I think rocked in either round three or round two, and I was like I had to come back and dig dig really deep. And I had a lot of like, not mental issues to deal with, but I wasn't really focused fully on that fight, but, but I was like, maybe I was just a bit nervous and anxious. Mm -hmm. And I overcame that during the fight and I just, I ended up coming to, kind of overcoming that and winning it. Wow. But I was, I, was, I was getting rocked in round, I don't know, rocked round two, round three, and my coach was just saying, he's like, oh man, he's like, don't fuck this up. He's like, you're doing well. He's like, you're still in this, like, come on, you can stay in this fight. Like, but I didn't get countered or nothing, but I, I, I got dazed a bit. And I just remember right. saying like, saying to myself, that's it, I've got to switch on and, and go go for hell for leather. I don't care if I die right now, but I'm not going to lose this fight. I ended up having fun, and afterwards, like, just looking back at it now, like, I found out a lot, a lot about myself. Like, I answered a lot of questions, like, you know when you're a fighter, you like, you get to that, you get, during a fight, you're like, oh shit, you get overcome with some adversity, and you're like, what do I do now? I've got to overcome it, this is, this is it, this is it. So what move is made of, I've got, to, I've got to switch on now. If I don't pull, um, pick up the intensity now, it's all going to go to, shit now and all that training done i'm gonna pick it up now and that's where I, I sort of found myself and i was like okay, i can do this like i can reach deep waters and, and keep pushing through and i was lucky enough to get the win and yeah it was a good good night for me yeah wow that's yeah. cool man yeah i think that's yeah that's a big moment in a lot of fighters careers when they get that adversity and they're able to overcome it you know yeah and for some people it comes earlier some people later yeah, but yeah. you know you ask that question to yourself right that deep like heartfelt question like what you got man you know you're gonna just yeah. let this let this do do this to you yeah or you're gonna come back and you're gonna you know show them what's up it, it was it was it was good because like a lot, a lot of friends and family that were there and it was just right i think I even i don't i don't really like take notice of the crowd but i think that was the one time i could actually hear like my friends and like family like albert let's go you got me like get get back in this and i was like yep yeah, let's go so yeah, when man. you got your hand raised at the end Oh yeah, yeah. It, it felt describe good. us that feeling. <laughs> it, was, it was good, like yeah, it was good. <laughs> For those that, are, so someone that's never fought and doesn't know what what it's like, describe that feeling. Oh, I was more more relieved. If anything, I was like, I was like, please, like, I just want to be able to party tonight and <laughs> drink, and I don't want this to like dampen the mood. Yeah, raise yeah. my hand, man. <laughs> raise my hand. <laughs> I was like, do not stop up please. the vibes tonight. Yeah, I was like, what are you having tonight? What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and lucky enough, I got my hand raised, and yeah. Was right, really good so you were to party with like a clean, clear yeah, conscience. Yeah, I was like, I, was like, oh, yeah. I can get mangled tonight. <laughs> all good, boys, all good. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sick, man. So the next thing I want to ask is, is how can people follow your journey? So if, you know, people are out here, you know, we've talked about a lot of really inspiring things. 
um, you know, how can people stay in touch with you, stay connected to your journey? So I've got obviously the social medias on the social got uh, Instagram. You can follow me at albyzab A L B Y X A V. Okay, I'll post the link on that. And, and then you got uh, my Facebook page is at Albert Timorese Assassin. Okay. And I've got a website as well called Timor Albert Albert Timorese Assassin. Timorese Assassin. Timorese sorry. Assassin. Timorese yeah. Assassin. Timorese Assassin Xavier. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a, a website as well that, like obviously. Um, for your, your work? For, for the work and it just details it. So it's teamreesmartialarts.com. Okay, cool. And it's all it's all linked up on there if you uh, look on cool. the Facebook, on the Instagram, it's all there. All right, I'll post I'll post links for all you guys. Yes, yeah, sweet, that's cool. awesome. And what's what's next on the horizon for you? What's your next fight line I'm up? fighting in Cambodia on, on it's called Kumar, Kun Kumar Promotions. Kun Kumar, okay. I think, I think that's the, what it's called, yeah. Kun Kumar, yeah. Fighting on the, the Cambodian show there. And cool. And then I think after that, I'm not too sure, but just focus on this one for now. So when when is that? October 13th. Oh, okay, coming up pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, so I've, I've never cool. fought in Cambodia as well, so that'd be pretty cool. And is it, it's just like Muay Thai? Muay Thai, yeah. I mean, right. I've had like, a Cambodian boy, yeah. You're fighting a Cambodian boy, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah. yeah, you know much about him? I just know he's fought a lot on that show. That's why okay. I don't really know. Yeah, 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 I should really look into it, but I don't know much about him yet. Have you, have you seen many Cambodian uh, fighters fight? They are fight? tough, man. They are yeah. very tough, and so I, I got my work cut out for me, that's for sure, yeah. And cool. Yeah, it should be, it should be interesting to fight. Yeah. yeah, they got like kind of a similar style to Thais, but yeah. they they kind of like to knee and elbow a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't tend to have so slick boxing. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe not as uh, technical or crafty kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll it's cool, see. Man. We'll see what happens. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, is there any shout outs you'd like to make? Um, um, anyone in particular? Oh, well, thank you for having me on, man. That's oh, all good. <laughs> it's my pleasure, man. It's my Should pleasure. Just shout out to everyone at home, all my team at Absolute, all the Young Bulls crew. Um, yeah, family and friends, love you all. Vivo to Moleste. My man. Thank you, bro. Thanks, brother. It's been an honor, man. No, thank Thanks you so Thanks much for having me, man. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Hey, guys, Steve here. If you like the content, please don't forget to press like and subscribe to stay up to date with the most recent episodes. I'll see you guys on the next one.